In this video, we're going to be covering how to properly remove and change your desktop's CPU cooler. For this procedure, you'll want a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, something to cut zip ties, some extra zip ties, a paper towel, and extra thermal paste uh, if your new cooler doesn't come with any. To start, you wanna make sure your PC is off, unplugged, and cooled off before working inside of it. Uh, make sure your hands are clean and dry before touching any electronics. Uh, there are two major types of CPU coolers on the market, all-in-one liquid coolers and heat sink fan coolers. Uh, though they may look very different, they share a lot of the same installation steps. Uh, if you are upgrading to a new cooler, uh, make sure you verify that a cooler is compatible with your system and read through the installation instructions fully before attempting. Place your desktop in a workspace where you have easy access to all sides, remove both side panels from the case and set them somewhere safe. We recommend using your smartphone camera to document the entire process in case you need to remember how components were installed. To remove the old cooler, the first thing we want to make sure is that any fan or pump wires are freed and unplugged. You may need to cut some zip ties to do this. If you are working with a liquid cooler, you want to next release the radiator assembly from the case. Depending on your case, it may be mounted on the rear, top, or the front. Usually the rear mounted radiators are easy to figure out, but top or front mounted may require you to remove panels from the case to access the screws. Once the radiator is freed, lay the case down on its side to remove the CPU block. If you have a heat sink and fan cooler, you will start at this step. Almost all coolers are held in place with similar mounting mechanisms. You will find four screws at the corner of the coolers with some manner of spring loaded bracket holding it in place. For AMD CPUs, some coolers will reuse the existing AMD mounting clips instead of having their own bracket. These will be easy to spot because you will see these tabs gripping plastic hooks on the top and bottom of the CPU socket. Pay attention to this because it's extremely important for cooler compatibility on the AMD platform. If your old cooler reuses the stock mounting clips and your new cooler doesn't, you will need to remove them. Uh, if your old cooler does not use these but the new one does, then you will need to find or purchase a replacement mounting bracket. For AMD coolers without screws, there will usually be tabs that hold the CPU cooler in place. There is usually a lever to loosen the grip, then you will need to press down on the tab and then rotate them away from the bracket. If your cooler is on the Intel mainstream platform, you will usually have a plastic backplate to keep track of. Once you remove the cooler, this plate will usually fall out. Some stock coolers use plastic pins which do not need back plates, they just need to be rotated and pulled. Uh, when you have removed the cooler, be careful of the thermal paste on both the cooler and the CPU itself. This paste should not be reused, so you will need to wipe it off with a paper towel. Be careful to not get this on your skin or onto your clothing. If it gets onto your skin, make sure to wash your hands with soap and water immediately before continuing. If you can clearly read the model name on the CPU and there isn't any obvious paste on the surface, it's usually clean enough to proceed. But if you want the surface to be extra clean, you can use some rubbing alcohol to clean it completely. Check if your new cooler comes with thermal paste pre-applied. If it doesn't, you'll need to put some more onto the CPU. We recommend a pea-sized blob right in the middle of the CPU. Now it's time to mount your new cooler. If your cooler has a backplate and you don't have another person to help, you can place the backplate on a flat object like a small box to hold it up to your motherboard. Don't use anything that may scratch the board. Refer to the installation manual for your new cooler for instructions on exactly how to install it. So after you have everything back together, it's time to fire up the system and see if everything's working. Uh, when you turn everything on, you want to make sure that the fans you installed are spinning and are lit up appropriately. Go into BIOS first and monitor CPU temperatures there. If BIOS looks good, then go ahead and boot into Windows and monitor temps while doing the things you normally do until you are confident the installation was a success. That concludes our installation video. Thank you all for hanging out and watching with us. We hope you found it informative. Uh, if you'd like, give us a follow on all of our socials down below.